happened to me out here, which I thought were normal, but evidently they aren't. Are you really a teacher? Seconds? Over there. I heard it like... Huh? Ten point two. Is that your favorite spot here in the house? Yes. Another episode of Unearthing the Supernatural. Our paranormal journey tonight brings us to the old mining town of Gleason, Arizona. Located 16 miles east of Tombstone, on the southern slopes of the Dragoon Mountains. Historically, the area was revered as sacred to tribes such as the Chiricahua Apache, the Tohono O'odham, the Pasquayaki, and several other tribes. The indigenous peoples of the area would perform several ceremonies of the mountains and collect the turquoise that was found within its hills. It is this precious ore, as well as copper, lead, and silver that enticed the settlers and led to the establishment of several mines. One particular miner, named John Gleason, registered a copper claim and opened the Copper Bell Mine. During its peak, Gleason reached a population of more than 1,000 residents. And like most Wild West towns, Gleason was no exception to the crimes and murders that plagued the West. So rowdy. They had more shootings here than they did in Tombstone. Oh wow! I because in Tombstone imagine. they couldn't carry weapons. Yeah. So they'd carry the, uh, they'd come down here and they could shoot up the town. So. Gleason was a town that was known to have more murders than Tombstone, Arizona. It is these murders, hangings, and theft, as well as the genocide of the nearby Chiricahua Apache tribes, that still continue to send shockwaves in the nearby communities. With sightings of children playing in the old schoolhouse. Photos of a woman who was buried under her own porch, waving at tourists passing by. To a tragic event in 1991, sparked an interest in the Unearthing the Supernatural crew. Tonight, the crew wishes to investigate and help any spirits or entities that may be seeking aid walk with us as we make contact with beings from the other side. My name is Joe Bono. I was uh, born and raised here in Gleason. Uh, I own the Gleason Jail Museum. When I was growing up, this used to be my playhouse. I have things happen to me out here which I thought were normal, but evidently they aren't. And I, I thought it was a normal thing. I figured it was family or friends that I knew from Gleason. Uh, my name is Tracy Renee. My dad, Joe Bono, owns the, the jail here. I've been coming out here since I was little. Uh, we used to camp out here all the time. We used to come out here on weekends. It was very quiet then, and we used to just play around. At the time, the jail was not what it is now, but we used to run around out here all the time. There was a lot of history here. We lived here before there was electricity or running water. I basically come out here when my dad comes out here when he opens the jail and help him out. Coming out here, it's really quiet, so you get to hear a lot of things that you don't hear in the city. It's very quiet out here. It was just a lot of groups of uh, people that lived out here, Italians, uh, Spanish, uh, Irish, 
uh, Native Americans, we had Chinese, we had a Chinaman that uh, had the Chinese restaurant. Cochise was held here one night when he was brought out of the Chiricahuas and uh, they couldn't travel that far on horseback so they had to stay here the night. My name is Hayden, I'm the grandson of Joe Bono. Basically I just help with the tourist attractions and I take people on tours on the Polaris. I've basically experienced a lot of like paranormal things. Some things you can't explain and you wonder if it's happening to you but you think it's an everyday thing so you just go on with life. Personally, I've heard whistling out here, I've heard whistling in my ear, I've heard footsteps follow behind me. If you're sitting out here and it's really quiet, you can hear kids laughing out here. I'll be like going out with them into the uh, trails and like different types of areas around here. You think you hear a lot of things out here really mind-boggling because you'll hear one thing and then you'll hear another. When, when we lived here there was a lot of different people you know they all got along and, and did everything they had to do to get along at that time. Yeah. After wrapping up the interviews and learning about the strong connections that the family has with the spirits of the area, Hiro asked some of the members of the family to join them on an investigation so that they may have a bridge to make better contact with the spirits of the other side. The first stop of the night is the Gleason Schoolhouse. With tales of children running around and very strong paranormal activity, the crew attempts to make contact with the other side and try to learn the story as to why children are still haunting these grounds. Tap in. Tap in. Is that you making noise over there? Who is making noise over there? Hello spirits! Come to you! Talk with you! We're unearthing the supernatural! We're a paranormal investigator group! So I'd like to do a little show and tell, since this was a school back in the day. You had a bright flash behind your head. This was a school back in the day. This was a school back in the day. I think they like your hair. Do you like my hair? I'm talking to this box I have in my hand. What? It's a man. What's your name? Are you a teacher? Who's the caretaker of these children here? As a female. She's a male, I think. Who are you? What's your name? Would you guys like us to bring in our guest now? We have guests for the classroom. Ken. Ken? You guys want to go ahead and come in here? I was here probably about a year ago, and we came down to talk to you guys, and I heard guests being pushed around. Was that you guys? Do you like it when we come out here to play with you?
Four point seven. Mm -hmm. There you guys go. I'm getting like chills right now. What's your name? Did you say IR light? No, uh, a light, a flash of light by the pillars that are in front of the school. Did you say that? No, I didn't. I, I heard on my right ear it's an IR light. I thought that was you. No, all the way over here. Come talk some more. Yeah, come over here. I heard you. You guys are actually starting to make contact with me. What'd that say? How long did you go to school here? That was a little kid's voice. Do you guys miss? Do you guys miss your family? No. No. Where's your mom? Realm. Waiting realm. Waiting realm. Are you guys in purgatory? Is the teacher their caretaker? Are you really a teacher? Did that say hell no? Why aren't the kids speaking? They're weak. Use the energy that he's using or giving out. Tell your story. How old are you? After hearing that the children's spirits were too weak to communicate with us, Hero decides to give some of his energy so that the stories of the children may be heard. It is this technique that allows the spirits to actually break the plane of existence and join our physical realm. Watch as we are about to capture some of Unearthing the Supernatural's most amazing evidence. Clearly see, as Shang Clan pans around, that there is no figure in the doorway. But as Shang Clan pans around again, a small child-sized figure manifests and takes a peek to look at the crew. And just as quickly as it appeared, it vanishes. I invite you into this building. I invite you into this conversation. Come from the bushes and talk. We want to hear your story. There was like a whirlwind that came through. Come tell us your name. Four point six when I said I heard something. Yeah. 
Come play with our toys. Hey. 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 Our secret weapon. His name's Kowalski. <laughs> Why don't you come play with him? Pick him up. Go ahead. Turn off your light. Weak. Too weak? Oh, there's a spark. Where? By Kowalski. Kowalski's glowing a bit. Touch it. Touch it. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. Touch it. Use what you have left and move that. Pick it up. If you can pick that up and move it, you can have it. I invite the kids to come play with me. Only the kids, not the teachers. It's your last chance. Is there anything you want to say? We are able to spread your message all across the world. Whatever message you may have, say it. Is there any advice you want to give? It just went 11.02. It's ice and ice. 13.0. 13.0? Knock it off my hand. You can have it. How about some tobacco to go with it? Put some tobacco in my hand. Does that help it cross over into the spirit realm? Now Kowalski is blessed. I'm not too sure if that's dust. Well, it's not really moving. No. I moved a little bit. But there was like a bunch of things that came up over toward Kowalski. All right, we gotta get going soon, so if you want it, take it now. Use everything you have. Just hit it off my hand. And it'll be here forever. All right. If the kids can't do it, there's 30 seconds for any adult or any other entity to come take that penguin. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Mine again. You can go ahead and dump the tobacco, Hayden. Here you go, hi. I guess I keep Kowalski. <laughs> <laughs> they must not like penguins. <laughs> no, we reached while you were at like 10 seconds. Over there. <laughs> Up. 
my leg gave out. That, when I put that, is that where the, where you were holding your hand? Yeah. Seconds. Over oh, there. Shit. I heard it like. Huh? Seconds. Over oh, there. Shit. After capturing some amazing evidence, and making some solid contact with beings from the other side, the crew decides to leave the schoolhouse, and move on to the next location. But just as they are about to leave, Hiro receives a message from his spiritual protectors, that right outside the walls, there is danger. silent like that, I don't walk past you. tracks. Thanks to Hero's spiritual guardians, the crew was made aware of the mountain lion just outside the walls, and were able to chase it away, and leave the location safely. The next location that the crew attempts to investigate is the old Gleason Hospital. The old stone walls and structure that remain standing, bared witness countless death, sickness, and mining operation accidents. It was common practice for this Gleason Hospital to receive countless patients from mining operation accidents, and when the diagnosis warranted the amputation of limbs, those dismembered body parts would be tossed into a fire pit and burned just south of the building. Not only were the body parts burned, but also victims that fell ill and that the doctors deemed worthy to be burned in the pit. The crew will attempt to tap into the energies of this old building and let the spirits of the hospital give you their diagnosis. Ooh, ha ha, right here. Hero. Huh. What? Get over here. Hey, no, Rio. Bring the camera. It's right here when you step into it. Oh, whoa. Yeah, you see that? You feel that? Christos, Setas, Zolta, Chinch, Chishkini, Dalos, Sistadia, Cabo, Essence, Chopa. So, we are... Halt. halt. Do it again. You did it before, do it again. What are you looking for? Is that you? Is all tch -tch -tch. That's a sock, okay. Does be. You want to communicate? Come into the doctor's office. We're here with Hero, Narion, Sean Klen, and two more of our guests. So we're going to go ahead and try to make communication. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, start asking questions and...
How many of you have died here? Are there any soul eaters out here? Beasts, monsters. How many spirits are trapped within this building? Waiting to move on to the other world. 10.2, dang. I think you're tugging at my sweatshirt. Let me get closer to you. Say your name. That's me. Say who you are. Say what you want. Do you want that ceremony? Do you want to move on to the other world? What's your name? Do you need help? Okay. Something right there. We're here to help spirits in need. Point five, point six. We're Native American. Four point two. Are there other indigenous people here? Oh, yat eh. Is there anybody with us tonight? One. What is your name? Are you a good spirit? Die here at the hospital. Or are you a local? Is there anyone with Kenny? I am. Yeah. It says yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? So to my left, there is a huge white light. Like not bright, bright, but like a white mist. Huge, like this big. Came right here and then went back behind me. Are you afraid of us? A little? A little, yeah. We mean you no harm. We are here to help you out. Can you please communicate with us? Necro? Necro, yeah. Who's here with us? Lewis. Lewis? Is that your name? Put the echo effect on. Out like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Is this a hospital?
can't uh, uh like spirits like be trapped in a loop so like let's say like this was still a building like people passing through and, like, yeah memory yeah memory hauntings yeah Why are you responding only when I use that app? A beast. Is there beasts out here? There is. What kind of beast? It, I think it said like plenty. Do they come from the mine? Are you trapped because of them? Yes. yes. That was another yes. A male voice said yes. Do you want to be set free? I don't. No. Why do you want to stay here? What was this building? Free? At most hospitals, they have a praying area, right? Chapel. Is there a chapel in this hospital? Whoa. Huh. Yeah. Make sure there's no snakes. Are those soul eaters out here now? Close. They're close? I'm gonna reset this, okay? Can you walk by that machine again like you were before? Here they come. What's coming? The uh, man. The man. Thanks to the communication with the spirits, the knowledge of knowing that there are death spirits and soul eaters roaming about will greatly help the crew when it comes to aiding the spirits of the area. The next location that the crew will investigate is a trailer located within the town of Gleason. Situated not 100 yards from the hanging tree, tourists and other investigators often catch pictures of a ghostly figure waving back at them, who is said to be the wife of the trailer's owner. It is said that after the wife had passed on, the husband couldn't bear his wife being apart from him, so the husband decided to bury his beloved wife underneath the front porch of their home. We're indigenous people from up north. The tribe of Navajo. And we're here to investigate um, activities around here. This used to be an old town, we understand. And we've heard many stories about this town. And one including yours. And um, if you don't mind, with your permission, may we hear it? There's two devices here to communicate with us. <coughs> One you can do with your voice, and the other you can communicate with these lights, with that antenna right there. 
Move your hand over it. Just like that. Would you like me to go back on your porch? seem to get a response out of this device. Wanna try again? Go for it. Alright. The lady of the house here. No. A little bit, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and head on the porch. Down here. Yeah, down here. You guys seeing this right here? So this right here is kind of like the millimeter or the EMF. So it's going down. Right here it's picking up the energy. Porch. Was that you talking right there? Are we allowed to enter your home? Is that your favorite spot here in the house? Yes. Do you enjoy watching people drive by? If you want to document, this is the window yeah. where... Yeah? They said yeah. Were you kicking that? Were you kicking the... The porch? No. Did you guys feel that? Yeah. yeah. It was like. Inside. Okay, we're gonna go inside then. We're gonna get off your porch, alright? We're gonna go inside. And go around the back. Like, we're not moving, but it's just like, underneath us. After investigating the trailer, the crew doesn't receive any more compelling pieces of evidence and decides to move on to the next location. The fourth location that the crew investigates is one with a more recent and dark history. The infamous Bigfoot's trailer. Alfreda was having a 4th of July and the guy that lived here I'll take you by there the trailer I don't go in the trailer uh, they went down to Alfreda and picked up these two girls 15 years old got them drunk they brought them up here and abused them they threw them down one of the pits over there well, one of the girls was still alive Randy 
overturn state evidence against Bigfoot. So they gave him 20 years. Bigfoot, they sentenced him to death. He died in Florence. They executed. Randy got out in 20 years, but the mother of the one of the girls said, if he ever comes back here, he's dead. I got nothing to lose. Oh, good luck. Can someone hold this? Yeah. Watch that. That handle. Yeah. That middle. Busus. The middle. I got strapped. I'm not too fond of uh, if there's spirits that were harmful to the living. I'm here to get some answers. Truthful, honest answers. Truthful, honest answers. Truthful, honest answers. I want to be able to communicate with whatever beings in this trailer. Whatever energy is still here. Whatever just just like whatever time is here, whatever stains may still be here. What is here? Go ahead and set that up on the counter facing that way. That way? Yeah. Uh, on the counter. on your trailer. Climb it out. Is that my fault? If that's my fault, make a noise. If there are little girls here. Those little, those 15 year old women, those 15 year old girls. Do you need help? What's keeping you here? You can also communicate through that device right there. Step away from that device. What's your name? Oh God said, oh, Kokan, they are scary. This dog is egg of Chestini, Yogi. You hear that? Yeah. It's like whistling, huh? <laughs> Digital EVP recording session, Bigfoot's trailer. Is it true that Bigfoot spirit still lives in here? Or is it his deeds, his energy, his memories, the darkness? Is that still here? 6.9, 13.7. What's here? 10.60 This trailer holds the memories, the dark memories The last memories of Some of nearby towns Cherished children What's their story? Throw something in this room. You want to go home? I heard that too. He's 
is here. Who's here? Jeff? 10.6. Death? 8. Is Jeff 8. here? There's a flash of light over on that side. Is Death here? What was the name of your accomplice that helped you get those girls over in Alfreda? Was it your accomplice is the one that did it? The one that got away? Just so you know, the murders that happened here, the atrocities that happened here, is well known in the town. So much so that they don't celebrate 4th of July. How does that make you feel? Disorienting energy looms over the crew. Every member that entered that trailer, all were affected by some negative feeling. With much sadness and sorrow for the horrible acts that were performed in this trailer, the crew is determined to bring back balance to this land. With each passing location, the need for offerings and ceremony intensifies. The crew decides for their final location to investigate the 1910 Gleason Jail, where the thieves, murderers, and criminals were held in the Gleason area. This old building held captive to several prominent figures in history, including Chief Cochise of the Chiricahua Apache. Do we close the door? Yeah, let's close the door so we get no outside interference. Mm. I heard I bit them all. What was that? The door? What was that? I don't know. That wasn't the door? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm all wing. Come on. Here, just go back, just go back, just go back. That wasn't the door? Shh. <laughs> that wasn't the door. That wasn't the door, right? It was like right here on top of me. I'm all wing. Kind of felt all special for a bit. <laughs> it would seem the spirits have gotten tired themselves, and no further evidence in the jail was found. After a long night of investigating, and a very intense ceremony about to commence, Sean Clinton wanted to offer his final words and gratitude toward the spirits around. I want to say thank you, we started our investigation here. This whole entire property of Gleason Jail and neighboring buildings treated us well tonight, as well as the spirits within them. I say, yo! Myself, Sean Clinton, and our young hero, all of us are unearthing the supernatural. These spirits that are around, we're going to offer prayer to you, give you offering good energy, good medicine. And you guys can continue on with the history telling that is done here. All these items in this room, as well as the property. Say, so, yo, thank you. After we're done with this, meet us outside. My brother is going to do a call with the eagle whistle. Tell your friends the good. You know, if they want offering, meet us then when you hear the eagle whistle. I'll say, yo, thank you. I'm going at Concluding our investigation, 
hero calls upon the spirits of the area, and makes offerings, and lends aid to the ones in need. He and his spirits give safe passage to the spirits who wish to go on to the next world, and supplies, offerings, and protection for those who wish to stay on this earth. We at Unearthing the Supernatural would like to thank the Bono family for an amazing night of investigating and helping us make contact with the spirits of old. With amazing evidence, stories that will echo throughout time, and lasting impressions left on the crew, the old town of Gleason, Arizona has proved to be another iconic stop for unearthing the supernatural. We are few of many. One story of thousands. Let us hear yours.